Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse. When you think about biblical end times, what are some things that come to mind? Maybe red heifers or revelation or perhaps the mark of the beast. Well, for me, mark of the beast was one of the things I kept hearing about growing up. And I remember thinking once I got older and understood more about the world, like what is the mark of the beast? How would that work? And so joining us today are two good friends of mine, two very intelligent people, Clay Clark, I'm sure you're familiar with, and also Dr. Kirk Elliott. And we're going to be having a really candid conversation about the mark of the beast, about free will, about where our society is at right now. We've got so many events that are now culminating. We have the red heifers, the the rebuilding of the temple. There's so many things that are happening right now that I think that this whole idea of this mark of the beast, I mean, it's it's in our lifetimes. It's not something I think that we're going to be telling our children or grandchildren, hey, you should look out for that. I think that it's basically here. So we're going to be talking about where exactly it's being rolled out, what it is, what it means, uh, and just taking a sober look at it. So folks, please enjoy the interview. So Clay and Kirk, two gentlemen that I can call friends, uh, thankfully, but two gentlemen, I would also say that are uh, absolutely on the forefront of understanding the intersection of a lot of really important topics. Uh, you know, obviously religion, faith, you know, the, the role of, of, of that in today's world, which is obviously really important, but uh, finance, geopolitics, uh, you know, the bigger issues that you're not going to see really on Fox News, you know, BRICS, de-dollarization, these kinds of topics. So I know that you're both in your own way, absolutely focused and following what's happening. Um, but I'll go ahead and just hand it over to whoever wants to start first. I mean, what, where are we at? Because we've been talking about this for a long time. You yeah. know, I went to the store yesterday, I pulled out $5 bill. I bought $5 worth of stuff at the gas station. No problem. Uh, you know, did, did, didn't take me $1,000 to buy a can of soda yet. Uh, so where where are we at with everything? If that's okay, I'd like to kind of tee up the problem and then maybe let uh, Kirk one-up me because he knows what he's talking about as well. So I just want to tee up some of these things here. So Swift, um, this is not ClayClark.com, not RightWing.com. Swift has announced that over the next 12 to 24 months, and I encourage everyone to challenge me, don't believe me, SWIFT is a banking communication system. Most banks use SWIFT. They've announced that in the next 12 to 24 months, they are going to be introducing central bank digital currencies. So that is that is a fact. Kirk, we just would love to get your reaction to that. I mean, Clay, this is, this is one of the biggest things, I think, to hit this generation in, when it comes to monetary policy, banking crisis. Because with, with SWIFT, Banks don't receive wires without it. You know, now BRICS has their own version of it, but the rest of the world uses SWIFT. So when when they say they're making a policy change, who does that impact? Everybody in the Western world, right? So, so everything that SWIFT is now doing kind of dovetails and fits in perfectly with what the World Economic Forum, the IMF, the the Bank for International Settlements, the Fed, the European Central Bank have been working on and talking about, and you and I have been talking about on different channels for like a year. And and Clay, you did an amazing, amazing 17 minute video that kind of pulls all of this together. And I think everybody uh, that's watching this show needs to watch that because you did an amazing job. But here's where this is the culmination of things, right? So what is their goal? Um, You and I have both expressed it along with Seth for for a long time, and that is complete people control. It's not about fixing a system. When you hear central bank digital currency, it's not about fixing a broken system. You have to realize the people who broke the system and have the old one that's dying are the same people that are ushering in the new system. It's like they don't lose either way, but what do they gain? That's the thing. They lose fiat-based money, paper money, that's a private transaction. And what they gain with the elimination of paper dollars is digital control, the ability to know the source of funds, use of funds, everything about you, because what you spend your money on is the reflection of you, your habits, your thoughts, what you deem is important. And so if your ideology doesn't match up with theirs, well, they'll cut you off. They can just flip a switch if it's digital. And how do we know that ideology matters? Because they've said it. 
you know, Dr. Pippa Momgren at the World Economic Forum said that central bank digital currency is all about programmable money. Programmable meaning you can change it. Bank for International Settlements Project, Aurora Project, Icebreaker Project, Enbridge. Everybody can look at all of those things, all of those policy initiatives that are not initiatives anymore. They're real things that have, are actually happening. You look at, at what the Fed is doing and what the president or occupier, whatever you want to call him, of the United States did an executive order 14067 a couple of years ago, paved the way for this new digital Orwellian big brother world that evangelicals and Catholics since the beginning of time have said, you know, Revelation 13, the mark of the beast, no man, woman or child can buy or sell without the mark and it's number 666, blah, blah, blah. Well, what do you mean we can't buy or sell unless we have a mark? The language of the new central bank digital currency is you can't buy or sell unless your ideology matches up with the globalist. It's like, Clay, Seth, if that's not Revelation 13, I truly don't know what is. Mm. So let me let me play. Um, I hate the word devil's advocate because it, it's a really important role to play. But I don't want to be the devil's advocate. Maybe I'm like the the angels uh, the angels advisor <laughs> or whatever uh -huh. it is. Yeah. Um, but you know, looking at w what's happening with with bricks, right? So there's a lot of people that fall into this camp that they want to think that oh okay well BRICS is actually it's 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 this big fight against the the the, the federal reserve fiat currency uh european banking controlled system they, they want to believe that there's this battle going on between you know china russia and nato and the us but if you look at a lot of the actions uh, you look at a lot of what's happened because of BRICS, you know what they're doing in this de-dollarization process it's like standing here in america to me it's like well what it looks like it's doing is it's accelerating the introduction of central bank digital currency and when i interviewed uh g edward griffin recently and asked him this question he tended to agree uh with the thinking that he believed and this is you know really i guess you know where i'm at too that they're all kind of working for the same thing and that there's, mm. there's, there's like the overlords of the overlords and that the, the, you know, a being able to collapse the U S dollar just helps usher in this global central bank digital currency. And it's not like, it's not like Xi Jinping's going to come in and free us from our, our fiat debt slavery that, you know, is part of the federal reserve system and say, Oh, here, here's a gold back thing that gives you complete privacy. I mean, this guy's the, you know, they're, they're chipping their own citizens and they're forcing right. abortions and stuff. So do you think that the, you know, I'll actually I'll ask Clay and then, you know, let, let Kirk chime in, but it's a question again, distilling that down into the question. Do you think that the BRICS de-dollarization is actually just, playing a, another role in accelerating the path and the end goal of a central bank digital currency. Now, this is going to be a wild response <laughs> that I know you guys are ready for, but I'm just going to go there for a second, okay? Please do. So we, our Bible to Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 through 14. If you open up your Bible to Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 through 14, and you read it, the Bible states, and everyone needs to read this, okay? But it says that when the Euphrates River dries up, the false prophet will show up. China and Russia will team up and the beast system will show up. Now I'm going to read this to you with actual words from the Bible. King James version it says revelation chapter 16, verse 12 it says, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates that the water thereof was dried up. This just in the Euphrates river is drying up that the way of the Kings of the East might be prepared. The Kings of the East translation, that's China and Russia. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Dragon is China. Out of the mouth of the beast. Many people that work at CERN and are heavily involved in AI refer to it as the beast. Just go on to AI chat rooms and watch the nerds. They talk about unleashing the beast. Elon Musk describes it as summoning the demon. And it says, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, Yuval Noah Harari is now praised by Obama, Zuckerberg, Gates, MIT, Stanford, Harvard. He's on mainstream media every, I mean, he's on MSNBC for an hour and eight minutes. He's on TED Talks. He's on MIT. He's on Harvard. He's on 
interviews, interviews with celebrity actors or, or Natalie Portman, sit down interview with Natalie Portman. He's on late night television. I mean, this guy, Yuval Noah Harari. So it says it, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So just to be clear, as we're recording today's show, Israel is uh, involved in attacking Damascus, Syria. That's happening, okay? Uh, that's happening. You have Iran, Russia, and China. They are that they have all agreed they're supporting Palestine. That's a fact. June of last year, uh, China flew out the head of Palestine to announce that China was militarily and financially supporting Palestine. That's a fact. The Euphrates River is drying up. That's that's a fact. AI is emerging. That's a fact. The Yuval Noah Harari is talking about rewriting the Bible using AI. That's a fact. He describes humans as hackable animals. That's a fact. He's talking about ending the use of money. That's a fact. So all of these things are converging. And so what I would say is the, 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 the prophetic aspects of the Bible, and I'm not attacking any prophets who are watching today's show, but here, here are my thoughts on this. I believe so many people are looking for a word of the day, Kirk. I think a lot of people are looking for a good word of the day. I, I, I live in Oklahoma, okay? So a lot of people, I'm not mocking, I'm not mocking anybody. This is what will happen in Oklahoma. If you go to Oklahoma, you go to Panera Bread, this will happen to you. Someone will say, hey, brother, did you see the word? They talk like that. Hey, brother, a lot of Christianese, did you get the word? And they go, what's the word? And there's usually prophets that have like a word of the day. Like, hey, brother, do you see the word? And the word might see kind of a vague, you know, description of things that might happen in the future. And there's a lot of people in Tulsa that are looking for a word of the day. And I think people who are looking for a word of the day often don't read the word, which is unchangeable. And that's known as the Bible. So I would just say this, 27% of the Bible is prophetic. And it's, and it's, and it's coming to pass. 73% of the Bible is historical. And it told you what came to pass. And I and, and I do believe there are real prophets. I do believe there are real pastors and teachers and prophets. But I'm just saying we're seeing the prophetic aspects of the Bible all take place and all converging at the same time. And so back to the root question, BRICS, is BRICS working on our favor? Are they trying to stop the central bankers? I believe that all of these events are converging at the same time to fulfill the prophetic word of God. That's what I believe. Uh, feel free to reject. Feel free to re reject me with great enthusiasm, there, Kirk. I can't reject that because it's true. See, everything that we're seeing, I believe, is is a physical manifestation of the spiritual battle that's being waged since the beginning of time, right? And so, what's what's real interesting about what you said? God's word said it sometimes thousands of years ago. And now logic, our brain. So, so that part's based on faith. The logic is what all these things that were stated thousands of years ago are happening right now. This is where the spiritual world and the physical world blend, where faith and logic blend. And you know what? They're all telling the same story. So we should be aware and we should listen and, sh and we should act, you know, just like uh, Queen Esther. Right. So what did she do? So, you know, she went to the king because her people were about to die, the whole nation. And she basically married the king. But but you couldn't actually go speak to him unless you were asked. Well, she asked him, I have to make a plea for my people to save them. She knew that if she didn't act, the entire nation of, of Israelites would have died. But yet she made her request known. The king heard it. And a whole nation was saved because of one woman's bravery. So what can we do to our nation? What can we do for our world? Well, it, it probably will die, Clay, if we don't do anything. But this is why we have to be aware. We have to listen. We have to listen to what you just said. Listen to what the word said. See how they all blend. And then take that leap of faith and start to be bold and courageous. Because the enemy wants us to operate out of a state of fear all the time, which causes us to do nothing or causes us to make the wrong decision. That's what fear always does. But God didn't create us with a spirit of fear. He created us with a sound mind, with wisdom, with creativity, with discernment, with boldness, right? So when we operate in that opposite spirit of fear, we can make massive changes. And this is where um, I'm not saying that the world is going, that these things are going to be stopped. 
Folks, perhaps you'd agree with me when I say that over the past five years, the mainstream healthcare system's credibility has plummeted. Alternative healthcare systems that aren't beholden to medical consensus or big pharma are on the rise. Sweetamine is time-tested and proven to boost your life with better health. It's one of the leading products that helps with inflammation and daily aches and pains. Just because you get older, it doesn't mean that you have to feel old. And folks, did you know that most of the diseases that make people sick and die these days are rooted in chronic inflammation, oftentimes due to glycine deficiency? So sweetamine is composed mainly of the amino acid glycine, the nutrient that the immune system uses to regulate inflammation. So with once daily sweetamine, most people feel the reduction in pain after just a few days. So I challenge you to the 12-day sweetamine challenge to fight inflammation and take control of your health today. So folks, buy sweetamine online at sweetamine.com or call 855-GET-SWEET. That's 855-438-7933. And make sure you use promo code SETH, S-E-T-H, to get a nice discount on your purchase. I'm saying, because God said that they were going to happen, we will have a mark of the beast. But what I'm saying is there's going to be something parallel for God's people to thrive. And so just don't take that system. Don't accept it. Go to something different. This is where um, states like Texas Oklahoma, where you're at, pending legislation to have a state chartered bank backed by gold and silver. Florida wanting to do the same thing. Texas is voting for it in in May. So it's, you know what? If you live in any of those states, tell your politicians, say, you better vote for this thing or I'm never going to vote for you again. Um, but individually, outside of that collective action, you just have to make decisions, wise decisions with your own finances, which is why we've been talking about, Seth and Clay, to gold and silver, tangible assets, protect, preserve, get out of the beast system, out of paper, out of digital, into something that's tangible and real, because that is not just an escape to survive. It's really an escape to thrive, mm. well, I think which is what, what Clay Show is all about. Thrive time show, right? It's like we we weren't born to just survive. We were born to thrive and make a difference. What's interesting about this is that even people that really don't understand the Bible very well or don't read it, maybe they went to Sunday school a little bit growing up, they're familiar with the mark of the beast. Like most people, especially this day and age, are familiar. If you talk about the mark of the beast, they're like, oh yeah, that's like the end times thing. It's the it's it's like the devil controls you and what you buy and sell. I mean, it seems to be one of the the biggest, um, uh, I guess, themes of biblical end times when people are talking about it. Now, yep. what's interesting is that you know I cover a lot of topics on the show, but I've I also spend a lot of time talking about finance and like this isn't no, this, this isn't an investment show. Like to me, it, it's at the center of yep. so much of the this agenda. And also you could say at the center of a lot of the uh, biblical end times discussion is finance. It's in mean, the mark of the beast is a, it's a financial instrument. I mean, in many ways, I mean, it's not like it's an investment vehicle, but it's something that's tied to the buying and selling. And so if that's, if that is, is the system that becomes central to whatever, the the devil whatever satan has in, in in his playbook and and you can see it playing out you can see that okay we'll say they wanted to seize our homes or they wanted control of our cars or our food you know those are all really critical but nothing nothing comes close to how much power the these luciferian creatures would have if everyone was stuck in this beast system if everyone was on a central bank digital currency and that's what I think is why it's such an important topic. Because it's not just about it's not just about money. It's actually looking. It's it's peering into the future and recognizing that what they're trying to do is use this to take away free will. And that's I think that's a really important point. That's one thing I'm consistently uh, you know seeing over and over again. And one of the biggest lessons that I've taken away from life, but also you know, the, the Bible, like Adam chose Adam and Eve. They they chose to eat the apple. Right, like that—that that was their their decision. They they were given that free will, and you can see throughout history is that regardless of what the evil is or what it wants to do, we still have the free will. Like everyone might say, "Oh, they're forcing the jabs on people." It's like no. At the end of the day, maybe it meant you're going to lose your job. It doesn't whatever it meant. You still had the free will to do that. It was still your decision to say yes, I will do that. 
And so and that's why I think is, is interesting because you know, what you're saying there, Kirk, is that there's, there's a parallel system. There's a, there's a parallel pre, you know, way this is presented. Like, I think nothing is actually absolute because if it's absolute, it, it removes man's free will and then man can no longer show his true character. It's just like, oh, I was forced into it. Like they held me down and they forced me into it. So I, I, was, I had to. But that's what's interesting about this is that with this rollout of this system, that as frightening as it is, there's there's all these massive parallel economies that are building. Like at the state level, you say you have that happening. You've got you know the entire crypto space, which I'm not a big fan of personally, but I can see its role in being outside of that system. Um, so yeah, just just very good points. So, uh, before I move on, though, Clay, I wanted to give you a chance to respond. Yeah, well, I just want to share this. Um, this is a just very true story. And uh, uh, I always try to be very authentic with everybody who's watching. So, you know, um, years ago, before I met either one of you guys, uh, you know, I had built a successful company called djconnection.com. I don't own it anymore. I haven't owned it in a long time. But we were doing massive amounts of weddings and corporate events, about 4,000 events a year. And uh, I went to friends of mine that owned banks. And I just said to them, hey, what should I do with my money? You know, should I deposit it, make a little bit of an interest on it? You know, you guys own banks. I mean, you know, because if you, if you DJ enough weddings, you're eventually going to DJ for the banker's daughter or, you know, that kind of thing. And these bankers all would tell me, well, you, do you want to know? I said, yeah, sure. I said, okay, let's meet. So we're meeting with them multiple times, multiple times. One banker said, well, the main thing you want to do is take a quarter of your wealth and invest in precious metals. This is like 2005. And I'm going, what? You own a bank. And he goes, well, the th Clay, the way it works is I borrow money from the central bank that they don't have. And then I lend the money that they lent me that I don't have, that they don't have. And I lend that money at an interest to people who can't afford it and that are buying things they can't afford to impress people they don't know. And I'm like, what, 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 what? a lot of things you just said there. What did you just say? He goes, I lend money to people that are borrowing money that they don't have so they can buy things that they can't afford to impress people they don't know. That's the core function of the bank is I lend money to people that don't have it. That, as a general rule, are buying things they can't afford to impress people they don't know. That is the objective of the bank, okay? Now, I get the money from people that also don't have the money, and they lend me money that they don't have at an interest rate. And I said, well, where does it come from? He's like, ah, it's the creature from Jekyll Island. That's a whole separate thing. And he starts spitting out books, you know, and I'm going, what books now? So we got The Collapse of the Dollar, the Creature from Jekyll Island, these different books. And I'm going, the, I've never heard of these books. And I thought, man, this guy's out of his mind. So I get home. My wife says, how was the talk with the banker? I said, he's out of his mind. My wife goes, you met with the guy who owns a bank who's out of his mind? Clearly not. I mean, didn't you ask for the meeting? So, and, and so I'm like, whatever, you know? So I go meet with another guy who owns a bank and I'm like, what do I do with my money? And he said, well, you take a quarter of your wealth, at least it might take, uh, buy precious metals and then take a quarter of your wealth and buy real estate from emotional people. I said, emotional people? He says, Clay, if somebody is just got a divorce, that's always a good source. Somebody who's just moving, somebody wants to sell their house for emotional reasons. And I thought, all the bankers are sick freaks. These people are obviously detached from reality. These two guys that own banks, they're a bunch of idiots, you know? So then I met with a, a third guy of mine, a guy who he actually started, uh, he started from nothing and built, a, he bought a, an existing bank and grew it to be massive. And so this is like a double verified guy. I've known him since his early late twenties. And so I'm thinking this guy's going to really tell me the deal. And he said the same thing. And so I, around 2005, 2006, started buying gold. Now, at the time, I just did it because I knew the dollar would go down in value. And I want everyone to write this down, look it up, assume I'm making it up. Right now, the U.S. debt is rising $1 trillion every three months. Every three months, the U.S. debt is rising $1 trillion. And the U.S. interest expense is rising by $100 billion every four months. So what I'm saying is the biggest line item now for the U.S. government is interest on a, on a $35 trillion debt. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. So I've just been buying precious metals and just been doing it. And I bought from a small dealer and I still use the same guy today. And I'll tell you this, I know multiple people that know Kirk very well outside of this conversation who speak very highly of Kirk. And so I'm just saying, whoever you decide to buy precious metals from, you just have to understand this. You don't buy it because gold just hit an all-time high and it did. Don't just buy silver because it hit an all-time high and it just did. Don't buy precious metals just because you saw that Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa have announced that 35 additional countries want to join BRICS this year. And it did. Don't buy precious metals just because Saudi Arabia just declared Dubai, 
Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, they're all joining BRICS. Don't buy precious metals just because of the, the news event of the day. The trend is de-dollarization. That's the long-term trend. It's de-dollarization. It's hyperinflation. And it's all part of that revelation conversation, which is Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. So again, uh, Haggai, the Bible, H-A-G-G-A-I, tells us, the, this says, the gold and silver is mine, saith the Lord. So I'm just telling you, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, these people have been hoarding the earth's gold for 17 consecutive years in preparation to introduce a gold-backed programmable central bank digital currency. The physical bank has been constructed. It's called the New Development Bank. It's in Shanghai, China. The gold has been uh, purchased, and they continue to buy more and more, and they are ready to introduce a gold-backed programmable central bank digital currency. So to this day, what do I do? If I make a dollar, I take 25 cents and I buy precious metals. Do, what? Yeah. Do I do I buy from Kirk? Do I think Kirk's a good guy? I know multiple people that buy from Kirk faithfully. They, they, they just do it. And so what I'm telling you, just so we don't get any double speak or anything weird here, I years ago, bankers told me they're buying precious metals. They told me who they buy from. And I just very faithful, very consistent. It's not an emotional thing for me. And now as gold is $2,200 an ounce and growing and silver is growing, now it looks like I'm a genius because my money went up in value four times or five times or whatever. So again, the trend is de-dollarization. But outside of the news of the day, what you need to do if you have a sound mind, and I believe you do, and you want to protect your financial sovereignty, I believe you need to have a consistent methodology with which you invest with a precious metals dealer that you can trust. That's how I look at it. Um, Kirk, would love to get your reaction to that because again, I don't think this should be like an emotional event for anybody. Yeah, it should never be an emotional event. I mean, look at it logically, right? So like you, Clay, I, I started investing in gold and silver in about 2002, right? Silver was five bucks an ounce. Gold was 260. It's like, man. And you know what? I also bought silver in 2011 when it was $48 an ounce. I just keep doing it. Every single paycheck, like clockwork, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. But here's the thing. Even if gold and silver didn't move in price at all, they stayed static. What has the dollar done? The dollar has lost 80% of its value since the 70s when, when Nixon closed the gold window or a complete fiat currency. So even if gold and silver stay the same, the dollar is declining in value, meaning you've protected yourself. You use gold and silver as an insurance policy against the loss of purchasing power. But we're not seeing it stay static. We're seeing it grow while the value of the dollar is declining. It's just... Number one, a great investment, and the the numbers will actually show that. Um, and and I did a long term longitudinal study comparing stocks, bonds, mutual funds, uh, real estate, gold, silver. And you know what number one asset class was silver. You know what number two was gold. You know what number three was the stock market. So and everything else in type based on inflation was negative. Even real estate over 20 something years, it's like, man, does that's surprising. It was surprised me too. But so base it on logic. But also we have this other underlying current to all of it, where it's not just an investment, it's actually a mechanism to preserve and protect your freedom and your privacy rather than having those big non-governmental governmental organizations like World Economic Forum, Bank for International Settlements, IMF, World Bank, digging into your bank account, spyware on your bank account, that's what it all it is. Ideologically based spending patterns that could divorce you from your money, right? And so so God gives us a choice all the time, Clay, you said it, when, when you were talking about Harari and what he wants is viewing people and basically as useless eaters, and basically as programmable machines, right? So so God didn't create a robot. He created people with free will, like you talked about. So in God's word, he talks about all of these things. Um, we can either accept or reject Jesus. We can either sin or not sin. We can either take the mark or not take the mark. God would never put anything in the Bible that there is no choice because he wants us all to make a wise choice because there's blessings from making wise choices and there's consequences from making bad ones, 
right? So, so when he shows us these things, he's telling us through his word, look, there's blessing if you do the right thing. There's curses or or consequences from doing the wrong thing. Therefore, when when it talks about the mark of the beast, I never think it's the only game in town. Because God wouldn't put it in there if we didn't have a choice. He wants us to choose wily, wise, wisely so we can be blessed, right? That's that's the, the bottom line of it. Folks, how do you feel? Me, I feel great. And one of the reasons I believe I feel better is because I take Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. They have an amazing story how this product was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard. It's right there on their website. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who've purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. You should check it all out on their website. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. I think if you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, order today. Whether you order online or call them direct, you must use the promo code SETH, that's S-E-T-H, to get this special offer of 35% off, plus $10 off any additional sets, plus free shipping and the money back guarantee. So call them at 800-2468-751 and use discount code SETH or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code SETH to get 35% off. So so as you were talking about the debt, oh my word, biggest generationally impacting thing ever because you look at what Biden's been doing, his new budget, $7.3 trillion. It's like, is he out of his mind? We're going to go into debt another $3 trillion this year. So put it into perspective, from 1776 until 1980, when Reagan became president, 204 years, the debt of the United States went from zero to about $980 billion, not even a trillion, in 204 years. Just this year alone, we're going to add $3 trillion to the debt in one year, where it took us 204 years to almost get to a trillion before. 204 years. They're spending like drunken sailors. This is going to be worse because of what how you started the show, de-dollarization of the world, meaning we could build debt and acquire debt and always have a mechanism of paying for it because we had built-in demand for our currency because all oil settlements are traded in the U.S. dollar, international settlements between country traded in the U.S. dollar. But this is where in August of 2023, at the at the BRICS summit, Putin gets out there and he's spouting off. And, you know, Putin's Putin. He's going to tell the world what Putin wants to hear, right? So, or what he wants to say. But he was very smug and arrogant. And it's a, but it was different than his normal smugness this time. He said, we're going to de-dollarize the world. It's our objective and it's irreversible. It's like, those are fighting words there, Clay and Seth. But, but why was he so bold about it? Right? Because when you look at human, human nature and you start looking at people, when people are confident, it's because they're telling the truth. When people are telling a lie, they're kind of like shady and shifty and, you know, they're trying to hide something. Putin it was more than just his regular confidence. It's like, what does he know that we don't know? Kind of a feeling. Well, what, what we've come to find out is what you said. They added six of the nine largest oil producers of the world into the BRICS nations to make them BRICS plus, 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 de-dollarizing the world now when we have to raise the debt ceiling, when we have to pay for entitlements, social security, welfare, Department of Defense, all of that. We have to be careful now what we print because we don't have built-in demand for our currency, the rest of the world is going to look at it as monopoly money, start pulling away, inflation is going to persist, they have to raise interest rates to slow down inflation. This is why the Fed has not been lowering interest rates, even though they promised they would. They're keeping them steady because they're this juncture in life where if they lower interest rates, inflation goes through the roof. If they raise interest rates, they create the biggest recession, depression America has ever seen. They don't know what to do, so they're just pausing because this is where we are. We're at the end of a cycle of fiat-based money, central bank system as we know it, and a change is coming. We just need to prepare for that.
something that I also throw out there, you know, when we we've, we've been talking about de-dollarization for quite some time and hyperinflation, and as I mentioned earlier, it's like okay, well, I, I you know, yesterday I went to the grocery store or the gas station, took five dollars, bought five dollars worth of food. Now maybe the you know a soda was two fifty instead of a dollar twenty five, right? Like my, like it would have been five years ago. So it seems like things are yeah, relatively the same, but that's not really the case, right? Because one thing I've noticed scrolling through social media, whether it's Twitter or Telegram or whatever you know, media I'm on, you know, researching, that's how I do a lot of the research for the show. I'm seeing more and more videos that are these TikTok, tiles, TikTok style uh, selfie videos of someone crying in their car saying, I can't afford groceries. Or someone saying, you know, I'm working, you know, you know two jobs, 16 hours a day. I, I can barely afford rent. Uh, you're seeing more and more of these stories of people that can no longer afford just to exist in this country. And on top of that, so you have those stories that are being shown that are indicating, okay, something is up. But then on top of that, what you're seeing is stuff like the story where I'm not sure if you saw, but Walmart recently put their own police station inside one of their Walmarts in, I think is in, in Georgia, because theft was so rampant. So I mean, as crazy it is, I'll, I'll pull it up once I'm done talking, but yeah, Walmart literally just put their own police station inside of one of their stores, and they're literally putting cans of spam in, in glass, like anti-theft cases. So what's that also show? It's not just, I think it's not just civil unrest. It's not just people thinking, oh, well, maybe I can go steal some things. Of course you're going to have that, right? Like, oh, well, you know, California, I'm not going to be prosecuted if it's, if it's below X amount of money, so I might as well go steal a bunch of stuff. I, I think that we're actually getting to this place where, you know, people like Michael Yan, who I've interviewed, that, that, that understands famine and war and pandemics and everything that relates to that. You know, even he told me, he's like, well, what's going to kick off uh, famine and food shortages is the fact that people, that grocery stores can't even afford to keep things in stock because it keeps getting stolen. So we're seeing this, we're seeing play out that more and more stories of people that can't afford to live and more and more stories of rampant theft where people are literally stealing to feed their children. So I really think that obviously that the this upcoming election is critical and, and that's a whole different story because we could be Venezuela, Venezuela in about two short years. But I think that what you see is that we're fast approaching that. Like what we've been talking about, it, it's it's arriving. The 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 hyperinflation stage of the dollar, like I think that it's right around the corner. But I want to see what what do you gentlemen think? Well, I'll say this. Um, there's a thing called convergence, um, and I, I, we don't have the time to go into a, a lot of detail, so I'll go fast. Or this thing called the singularity, which uh, Ray Kurzweil keeps talking about. Yuval Noah Harari keeps talking about. Elon Musk keeps talking about it. Grimes keeps talking about the singularity, almost like the single point with which everything changes. And so we're seeing this convergence. And so uh, obviously some people will have seen this show before the eclipse. Some will see it after the eclipse, whatever. But, you know, you have like this date, April 8th, right? And so you have NASA who says they're doing operations called Mission Serpent Deity on April 8th. What's that? I don't know. I mean, who's in the naming committee who says Mission Serpent Deity? Sounds like a good idea. I mean, Snake God, what? That's happening. Mission Serpent Deity, April 8th. Then you have CERN, who has the world's largest computer, the world's most expensive computer, this thing called the Hadron Collider, which is trying to open up portals into other dimensions. And it's trying to recreate the Big Bang and isolate the God particle. And that's happened. They're, they're firing that up on April 8th. And by the way, Stephen Hawking, the legendary scientist who is an atheist, he said that if CERN was successful, it may end humanity. That's on April 8th. Then you have this massive eclipse on April 8th. You have Joe Biden declaring that America... It's going to do Transgender Visibility Day. And for anybody who doesn't know this, Baphomet is the transgendered symbol of Satan. So it's like Baphomet Appreciation Day, Baphomet Visibility Day. You have Joe Biden on Monday just declared that X is the new gender. He could have chosen any letter, any number, but he said that X is the new gender. That's on Monday. So you're seeing the convergence of all of these things. And I believe we're starting to see an acceleration of those things. And so you, you talk about hyperinflation, how hyperinflation works, to quote Andy Schechtman, is it's a little, a little, but a little. And all of a sudden, it's a lot. It's just a little, but a little, but a little, and then a lot. So you're going to see exponential compounding inflation. And you're going to see a compounding uh, effect to our lack of morality. You know, you, you, you're starting to see inequity. You're starting to see wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, nation rising 
rising against na- nation. You're seeing betrayal. You're seeing people. It's, it's like you're reading Mark chapter 13. I encourage everyone to write that down and walk, read it tonight. Mark chapter 13. It's like we're living through Matthew chapter 24. You should, everyone should write that down. Read it. Matthew chapter 24. It's like we're living through Luke chapter 21. And so we're seeing an acceleration of these conversations pushing towards the, the culmination of of the red heifers. This just in, the red heifers are ready to be sacrificed. The stones have been pre-cut. You've all know Harar, he's calling for creating the third temple, which is what the, the third temple has to be created so that the Antichrist can hop into the third temple and declare that he is God. I mean, you're starting to see, so, so there's a, a, a massive push of all these things happening at the same time. And so what I would encourage everyone to do today is if you're looking for hope, read 1 Thessalonians chapter four until your head explodes. I would do that. First Thessalonians chapter four. I would read that multiple times out loud as though it's written by God because it was. Two, I'd read Mark chapter 13. Three, I'd read Luke, I'd read Luke chapter 21. Uh, four, I'd read Matthew chapter 24. And then finally, I would schedule a conversation or a consultation with somebody you can trust in the precious metal space before your dollar loses all of its value overnight. Because the goal of BRICS is not to make the dollar worth less it's to make the dollar worthless, where it has no value, where it's perceived by the world as monopoly money that they don't want. And this just in, America imports virtually everything that we use on a daily basis, cars, clothes, food. And the only thing that we export is fiat currency, fake currency detached from any type of real value. So that's kind of my summary there. But Kirk, I'd love your reaction. Hopefully it's it's, it's uh, yeah more encouraging than what I just shared. Well, there's always hope in in the message, right? But you have to explain kind of the darkness of the world that we're living in to explain why God wants something different for all of us, right? It's like there's man's economy, there's God's economy. Which one do you want? (laughs) I'm choosing God's economy because man's economy is based on debt, right? Uh, You've talked a lot about Harari. What what, what is he? He wants everybody to act the way that, that... these chips or whatever would program them to be. God wants freedom. He wants us to make a choice. So you've got a Christ spirit versus an anti-Christ spirit. I'm picking the Christ spirit, which is all about freedom. It's all about thriving. It's all about, you know, being blessed so you can give, right? The, The government wants everybody equally poor. So we're subservient to them. We're their serfs, we're their slaves. And we make an end run around private capital banks to go directly for to the government for our support this is why i believe they are collapsing the banking system on purpose yep. why so people will go directly to the government and make us you know enslaved to their system so how do you how do you get out of that what clay said whether it's our firm or some other firm precious metals are really 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 an important part of the protection and growth in your portfolio. Look, you have to have both. You have to protect yourself from this enslavement world that's digital, that's paper. But you have to have growth because if your investments don't grow faster than inflation, you're actually sinking, right? So you can say, oh, I've got the CD and it's amazing. I'm getting 3%. It's like, yeah, but look, unofficially inflation is 12 to 15 percent you're actually losing like nine percent a year guaranteed it's a horrible guarantee so the only way for you to actually make sure that your money outlasts you is a control your spending and b invest into something that's growing faster than inflation to me that's gold and silver right now fundamentally it's strong stocks bonds mutual funds even real estate poised for more contraction because of government policies coming out of dc so take these words of warning, of which are just a reflection of everything that Clay said, everything that Seth said, everything that I said. It's not opinion. We're going to the source, repeating what they said and what they want their world to look like. Once you identify that, you can act with wisdom and do the opposite. That's where precious metals come in. Do the opposite of what you're saying so you can protect and preserve and grow and thrive. Good point. Well, gentlemen. It's been great having you both on. I'll pull up before we sign off. Uh, this is you know, Kirk's website. We have a link, goldwithseth.com. As Clay said, look, if you know somebody, great. 
if you don't know somebody and you don't know who to trust, there's a lot of charlatans out there. I, I, I know the industry really well. Unfortunately, there's a lot of very malicious people taking advantage of, of really of, of God-fearing patriots that want to get out of the system. And they're, they're selling over, you know, way overpriced gold, silver, et cetera. Um, Kirk is someone that I trust. Um, he's someone that I, I know very, very well personally. Goldwithseth.com. Also, 720-605-3900. Get a free consultation. Uh, gentlemen, I appreciate both of you coming on here. I, I'd love to, um, you know, have more time. I feel like we could sit down for eight hours and, and just barely scratch the surface on these issues. So thank you again, both for making time for me today and making time for our audience. We, we really, really appreciate it. Seth, quick note I wanted to share just real quick yes. here. If anybody uh, wants to join us on the final Reawaken America. Oh, tour, yes, 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 Clay. Yes. Um, and, and Kirk has helped many of the, the speakers, and he's a sponsor for many people. Uh, you go to time2freeamerica.com, time2freeamerica.com. It's June 7th and 8th in Detroit, Michigan. And that's where you're going to see Eric Trump, Laura Trump, Cash Patel, General Flynn, Roseanne, Jim Brewer. Uh, you know, so many great truthers are going to be there. And uh, frankly, this is where they get to speak the truth because we have no corporate sponsors. We have no censorship. We have no teleprompters. So again, we have just under 700 tickets remaining right now right now. And that's time to freeamerica.com. And we make our events very affordable for everybody. So you can always name your price. What does that mean? You can pay any price that you want to pay at all. But when you do request a ticket, if you mentioned that you heard about the reawakened tour through man in America, you have a chance to win a backstage pass to the reawakened America tour. So you can actually meet uh, Laura Trump, Eric Trump, Cash Patel, General Flynn, et cetera. And uh, we have just under 700 tickets. So you got about a one in 700 chance folks to meet Eric Trump, General Flynn, Cash Patel. If you go right now today, at this moment, go to time to free America.com time to free America.com. Great. Well, honestly, thank you both. We'll put the links in the description below. Take care and God bless. Folks, I have a quick message for you. Look, the 2024 election is do or die for the globalists and communists that have infiltrated our country and are currently running it. And they either have to win or they're going to destroy America. So nothing is left either way. And if you're the person that's watching this show and following this information, unfortunately, you have the weight on your shoulders of making sure that your family is prepared, especially as we head into this next year and this next election cycle, because unfortunately, I think it's going to get rough. And one of the ways I know they're going to target us is through our food supply. You can see all the food factories burned down. You can see the warnings of coming famines and food shortages and everything like that. And food is one of the number one ways totalitarian regimes have always used to control the population is destroy the food supply. So if you don't have at least two, three, four, five, six months worth of stored food, I highly recommend you take that very seriously. Because look, as I mentioned, if you're the person that's watching this, you're the person that carries the burden of making sure your family is prepared. I would recommend at least six months, if not a year, of storable food. So if things go haywire, whether it's grid down or terrorist attack from what's coming across the border, that your family can safely stay in place and you can feed your family. So folks, today, go to heavensharvest.com and make sure you get your storable food that'll last for up to 25 years. Just in case things go south, you know that you have what's going to take to feed your family, which is so, so critical for us to get through this next stage of history. So go to heavensharvest.com today, order your food that will last up to 25 years, and use promo code SETH to save 15% on your entire order. Again, that's heavensharvest.com and use promo code SETH, S-E-T-H, to save 15% on your entire order.